Stock market was falling, but there was Joe on the lawn. Saying the bill they passed would help me and you. But inflation is soaring, and my savings are gone. Joe can't remember who he's talking to. Joe's a liar and he's insane. He spends sunny days in the basement with no friends. He's seen Hunter's crimes, but the press won't cover them. And he's shaking hands with invisible men. Uh oh, James Taylor's back on the White House lawn. They must be passing another counterproductive inflation bill. Joining us now on the show, someone knows an awful lot about that. You talk about an embarrassment of radio riches, okay? This is just our booker showing off. Nobody even believed me this morning when I said it was going to happen. Stuart Varney is in studio. Can you confirm that? Oh, Jimmy. Flattery is the mother's <laughs> milk of radio and television. And you know it. Man. I know, you know Varney. It. Uh, and he, he is here at his own free will. Uh, uh, people were asked if this was a hostage situation. You can blink twice to confirm you're okay. I am perfectly okay. <laughs> I am ready, willing, and able to talk to you. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. Well, I want to start with your series, and then I'm going to get into some grown-up conversations. But American Built, it's hosted by Stuart Varney. It's Monday nights at 9 p.m. on FBN, on Fox Business. Um, I find American Built to be so perfectly timed to this moment. Why? Because it's a celebration of American exceptionalism at a time when we don't have a lot of that in our politics. Well, it's a celebration of what you can do, yes. what America did do, mm -hmm. given the right amount of courage, dynamism, and drive. Yeah. I, th I suspect that we're no longer that country. No. <laughs> no, I think we've become the no-can-do guys <laughs> as opposed to the can-do guys. Isn't it weird? So let me say that, Stuart Varney. Isn't it crazy as someone who has co you know, covered politics? Barack Obama once won the president on a message of yes we can exactly which in this day and age they'd be like check your privilege half white guy what do you mean yes we can easy for you to say you can't do anything in america without a lawsuit <laughs> there'll be a lawsuit for every single thing that ever happens at any time and that'll hold everything up yeah you can't do things today you mm. can't build things can you i mean no. in all seriousness yeah you, you can't just get on with it and do it Think, think about this, like something something like building a wall politically. Okay, in theory, a wall would be, you know, a two-day job. But then you get lawsuits and zoning and, you know, environmental protections and everything in, be in between. The point is now you got no wall. Yeah. Trump managed to build, what yes. was it, 300 miles of mm -hmm. wall? Yep. Despite intense opposition, mm -hmm. despite the lawsuits and all the rest of it, here's a guy – who could do things mm -hmm. like America. He's a can-do guy. Biden is the exact opposite when mm -hmm. you think about it, you know. <laughs> what the hell can this guy actually do? <laughs> well, listen, he can shake hands with invisible people. I've never seen you do it, Varney. I've seen you do a lot of impressive things. I'm watching the TV. I'm like, that Varney's a talented cat. Yeah, but I'm I five years younger than the president. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I've got a way to go before I get like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, everybody always says he's Jimmy Carter, but to his credit, it took Jimmy Carter four years to do what Biden did in one and a half. Absolutely. So it is kind of an accomplishment that we're in the position we're in, is it not? We should have seen it coming. Yeah, no, we should. I mean, you really should have seen this coming. Mm -hmm. Biden's job was to beat Trump. Yep. Once he'd beaten Trump, okay, we don't want to know about the that guy. That was it. And then he goes into a series of gaffes and messes yeah. up all the time. This is not a president that you can have a great deal of confidence in, mm -hmm. but you've got to say, long live Joe Biden, yeah. because uh -huh. behind him is Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> it really is his best move ever when you think about it. You know. Staying alive, Joe. <laughs> Staying alive. <laughs> what a firewall he's got there. <laughs> Stuart Varney is in studio. American built. It's uh, He hosted himself. It is on FBN Mondays at 9 o'clock. Uh, really quickly, things that jumped out at me on the episode list, Las Vegas. I'm heading to Las Vegas next week to do stand-up at the Red Rock Resort. Uh, it is sold out. You can't get tickets, but Stuart Varney could still get in. But the point is, uh, they rebuilt Vegas uh, after, I guess, uh, you know, the premise being that the mafia was kind of thrown out. The billionaires came in. The corporations came came in. How did they do that? I mean, it's fascinating to me. Wall Street came in with the money. Is that what it was? And showed that you could make a profit mm -hmm. in a gambling den like Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I think of Vegas, I always think, my goodness me, what would Vegas look like if it was a government 
project. Oh, Had it not been private enterprise building this brilliant, miraculous place in the middle of the desert, what would the government have done with it? It mm. would have looked bloody awful, would yes, it not? It would, I would have been and that, that's, the, that's the message here. You mm. can do stuff with private enterprise, and it works. Just get out of the way. Thank you. I, I will quote uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, you know, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem, but it's true. And is that not the point of a lot of this series, is that we were a lot more efficient with less government? Three or four or five words that we should bear in mind. Hi, I'm from the government. I only want to help you. <laughs> that was that was an appalling attempt at an American accent. I liked I, it, though. I, I liked Stuart Varney. No, I've convinced everyone that you're faking it and you grew up in New Jersey. <laughs> I've had true. this talk. I've had this talk with Cavuto. I'm like, I'm not buying the whole Varney thing. I know it. <laughs> I've seen him at the Molly Pitcher rest stop. He's what? like, hey, Maria, get in the car. I'm kidding. <laughs> get in the car. I don't have to take this. But it's good the way you do it. It's like a ventriloquist act. I Where'd can't. you get your energy from? <laughs> I, I mean, granted, you're only half my age, but still, you've got a lot of energy for a guy. You know what I'm like, Stuart Varney? I really am like a dog with a job, and I'll explain. You know when you go to the airport and you see the bomb-sniffing dog or the drug-sniffing dog sniffing everybody's luggage and his tail's always wagging because he can't believe they're counting on a white Labrador to save the plane? <laughs> I am the media equivalent of a white Labrador. My tail's always wagging because I can't believe they're counting on me to sniff the bags and save the plane. <laughs> so I'm always here. What does that make me? Uh, I, I Hopefully a guy who's not about to throw a tennis ball because I'll chase it away and then we'll have nobody <laughs> sniffing the bags. That's all. <laughs> but, I'm laughing, but we have Stuart Varney in the house. Did you cover today? Um on your show, the fact that Nancy Pelosi is trying to get people to dismiss inflation because it's a global issue. But it might be the worst consolation to the person affected by it I've ever heard. What Nancy Pelosi had to say today was pure desperation. I mean, she knows that the big issue in this election a few mm. days away mm. is inflation. Yep. And she can't accept that. She can't. She's got to get around that somehow or other. So she simply says, oh, we've got to change the subject. <laughs> well, no, you really cannot change the subject at this late date, especially because inflation is to some degree, to a large degree, your fault. Yep. You're the people who ended energy independence. You're the people who chucked 10% of the economy in cash into the economy. You spent trillions, and here we are with inflation. You cannot go to the country and say, it's not my fault, it's their <laughs> fault. You can't do that. It's you just a, can't. It's such bad messaging because, you know, if America is supposed to be the shining city on a hill, it seems so weird that their closing argument is, well, you should see the other cities. <laughs> yeah. like, wait, what do you mean? But well, we live here. <laughs> what happened to our city? The message is always, uh, you know, it's not good. No. No, that, 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 I, I got that wrong. The message from the Democrats is deliberately obfuscation. I know that's a, a stupid long word, but mm. it's, it's deliberately, let's not talk about the border. Mm. Let's not talk about uh, inflation. Mm. Let's not talk about the economy because we're not doing very well there. Mm. When was the last time you ever ha had in a conversation, I don't know what your social circle is, mm. when was the last time one said, huh, it's that January the 6th thing, I tell you. I tell you, <laughs> that really so is, true. that's gotten to me. I'm telling you, I'm going to vote on that. Have you ever heard that? I haven't. Maybe I'm in the wrong social circles. I don't never. know, but I've never heard it. <laughs> Stuart Varney's in studio telling it like it is. You are a bajillion percent right, is that nobody cares. You know, the, it's funny, to their credit, I'll give them credit for this. The Washington Post acknowledged that last week. They said Democrats have failed to make this a referendum on January 6th. The reason they failed is because their policies have have taken us to a place where we can't afford superficial fights. Meaning that was a luxury exactly. under Trump. We could pretend for three years that Trump was a Russian asset because we had nothing else to do. Okay? Now we got real problems, you know? Yeah. And uh, we don't have the luxury of going back to January 6th. Most people now, Stuart, when you bring up January 6th, the most shocking thing that happened that day was the price of gas, the price of eggs, and the price of bread. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to digress. No, but go ahead. But have you ever heard of the rotisserie chicken index? <laughs> I invented it. Before the pandemic, every single supermarket in America had those rotisserie chicken things. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. And usually it was five ninety nine a chicken. Yep. Fast forward to today, and it's eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine. And I was in a fancy supermarket in New York City over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Citarella, I think, is oh, the name yeah. of it. Okay, oh, yeah, expensive stuff. <laughs> Their rotisserie chicken was fifteen dollars. Stop it! No, I'm not stopping it. Wow. That was the standard chicken.
And wow. look at that. That's what inflation. That's the inflation that's real. That, Everybody sees that kind of stuff. It is crazy. Like, I'm turning tricks behind the gas station to pay for a gallon of 87 octane. Time was I'd only be doing that for the love of the game. You're the terrible. fact that I'm doing it for the gas. It's no way to live. <laughs> but I will tell you this. Like, as somebody who, you know, I spent a lot of time driving a taxi in New York City. In my garage, and this is no exaggeration, I said this on the Five on Friday, I was so in the minority ethnically in my garage with all of these wonderful men from every country on Earth, some from other planets as well. I'm not going to lie. There were some <laughs> there were some time travelers in that garage, okay? But none of them, and I mean this, they had always referred to me as the white guy. That was our running joke. The white guy. What's the white guy say? Because it's literally the only white guy. But I've really got to know a very, you know, a heavily diverse crowd. None of them care about anything the Democrats are pushing, whether we're talking about climate change. If you live in the inner city, and like you said, your rotisserie chicken has tripled in price, the last thing you care about is what the weather's going to do 10 years from now. Right. That is such a luxury. I mean, I don't use the term white privilege, but I consider it white privilege because it's only white coastal elites that care about climate change. The elites have grabbed control of our political institutions and bent them in a far-left kind of way. Yeah. And then they walk away from the problems that they have created. It's so the true. The coastal elites of California and the northeastern United States make me throw up. I don't mean to get too serious <laughs> on you. But uh, they've, cre they've created a country which I could barely recognize from yep. the one that I came to nearly 50 years ago. Well, that's what's so crazy to me is everybody shares that sentiment, even if they've migrated recently. Like when you see how they're hemorrhaging Latino support, one of the reasons they're hemorrhaging Latino support is it's starting to resemble the country they fled. Right. In a, isn't that crazy? And, and, and I, they don't get that. But it's so hard to sell oppression to people who were actually oppressed. You know, they sell it well in this country because we have no perspective. They can't admit it. Yeah. They can't be honest. Yeah. They just can't. They have no answer, so they walk away. Mm -hmm. No answer, walk away. Yeah. That's just not good enough. No. We've we, we got to change course here. You've got to have some honesty, some nuts in the game. Imagine here. that. No, you I'm know. with you. And, le and you know what else they need? They're going to need something to watch on election night because the Democrats are not going to want to watch these returns. So allow me. Do you uh, remember election night on 2016? Oh, do I ever. The season of the two. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> All the meltdowns it and everything. such it's fun. Been... I am so excited to get called a white supremacist by Joy Reid on election night this year. <laughs> My over-under for white supremacy is 8.05 on election night. They'll be showing Capitol footage, January 6th footage by 8.30. It's going to be a bad one. But you know what? They deserve it. It's a byproduct of their own making, is it not? It is 100% a byproduct of their own making, and I think there's going to be a red wave. I pray, I hope there's a red wave. It's going to happen. Stuart Varney was in our studio. We will always have this. This is a big deal. Uh, really quick before you go. American Built. It's Monday night. It's 9 o'clock. You can watch it tonight on FBN. Uh, uh, not only we hear about Vegas, the Verrazano Bridge, even the Houston Astrodome, uh, which is fascinating because the Astros just beat our New York Yankees. True. And uh, it happens. What are you going to do? Uh, I didn't I didn't bet that one. So you'll be happy to know I don't need to crash in your office again. This the Astrodome was something that I heard about when it was built living in England in the 1960s. Wow. Um, back then, you know, 50, 60 yeah. years ago, we were so impressed. Look what these Americans did. <laughs> My goodness me, an air conditioned stadium like that. That's incredible. <laughs> Now we don't think quite the same way about what America can do, do we? No, we don't. But that's why I think the show is so good. If you watch the show, it's like a halftime speech. If America was a ball team, a football team, because we're not playing championship ball right now, but we got a good halftime speech. This show really makes you believe in what makes America what it is. It does. Nothing going on in Washington does. That, Everything go that's what we're trying yeah. for. Washington, that's what we can do. Washington is selling this car out for parts right now. Okay. <laughs> Stuart. Varney has got this car on the lot. The engine's running. The tires look good. I'm telling you, I, I'm a believer again, and I owe it all to you, Stuart Varney. You're a good man. I don't care what they said. You, think <laughs> I don't you have are to a take good this man. Cut his mic. Thanks for coming by.